my name is Sean Tobin, and welcome to the living room at Sense 42, where today we are going to be getting a peek into the creative process behind four of the works in M1 Single Page 2019. Uh, let me introduce the panel. We have Zhou Tan here and Chen Yin Shen from Mosaic, Take Out Productions, stop giving me that smirk, Joel. And <laughs> there we have Malcolm Tan here, artistic director of the same stage, who's directing Untitled Women. And we have Pat Toh here, who is directing and performing in her own work, Tarek Incognito. And Luta Han, who is working on With Out. Um, so, a couple of things about today's session. I will try to create opportunities for you along the way to pop in and ask questions related to the topic at hand. And can I ask that when you do step up and ask a question or share a comment, that you use the microphone here at the front so we can all hear it. Can I also ask you that you switch off your handphones, just because it's rude. Thank you. I'm sure you're all very intelligent, sensitive people and we'll have that. So thank you for that. Um, we will also create an opportunity for you to ask questions and share comments at the end, both formally and informally at a casual reception after. So, uh, what we'll do is, the, the basic structure for today is... Yes, <laughs> I'm going to, um, we'll get each of the artists to just briefly introduce their work, but, uh, a little bit about the current development of the work and its previous um, existence. And then we're going to look at considerations that the artists are making in resurfacing, reimagining this work. We'll talk about shifts in, in intention, both shifts uh, from the point of, of starting the equipment process, but also how their intentions make a shift along the way. We'll talk about uh, drama, dramaturgical considerations or structures or approaches or influences that have been put in place uh, in the process, as well as influences, um, external influences, societal uh, influences on the work that may have surfaced as well. And perhaps how audience response or critical response may have shaped their considerations or may have not shaped their considerations. So let's just give you a rough idea of how the conversation will flow. Um, we're going to start off by asking Zahan to introduce us to his work without. Zahan, if you could just tell us a bit about the basics. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Okay, um, so Without is actually a reimagining, I would say reimagining at this point in time of Betty Choose Completely Without Character. It was a play done in 1999 by The Necessary Stage. Um, I'm not going to assume that everybody here knows about it, even though it's quite a simple play, because I also see that there are a lot of very young faces in the crowd. Um, so basically, Completely Without Character was a one person monologue uh, device um, with Paddy Chu, uh, in collaboration with Harish and directed by Alvin. Um, and, and it was staged in May of 1999. So Paddy Chu, uh, for those who are not familiar with him, was the person, first person in Singapore to come out publicly as living with the HIV virus in December of 1998 as part of, uh, he came out at the Singapore AIDS conference, the very first Singapore AIDS conference. And for a very long time, officially, he is still the only person uh, until Aiden came out, I think, a couple of years ago, uh, to be public uh, and be the face of uh, the virus, the disease, uh, of people living with the virus. So, um, so yes, he, he was a very important figure. He was very, very brave at the time. And in May, he actually collaborated with TNS uh, to do this particular production. Uh, and I would guess it's in the vein of a docudrama, kind of docu theater style. So he's actually on stage and he's performing his life story uh, one and a half hours approximately every single night. And it's uh, it just him on stage and it's about 12 scenes in total. And in the middle of the production, there's a Q&A session where he really encourages the audience to fire away and ask him 
really, really difficult and uncomfortable question sometimes, uh, and he handles it uh, very, very well. Um, and so that's the flow. Uh, there are five nights that he performed in May 1999. Unfortunately, we were ordered very shortly after the conclusion of the production, and in August of 1999, passed away. Um, so, yeah, I've already mentioned that during the Q&A, he was, he was asking, uh, the, the audience was asking difficult questions, but beyond that, uh, there are also several aspects of the production in 1999 that were quite groundbreaking. If you can see on screen, for those people who recognize the background, it's actually an IRC chat room. Yeah? So what he did at that time was that uh, he actually invited and expanded the theater space beyond the actual presence into the virtual realm. So he had set up, uh, or he, uh, through Syntacom, I believe, he had some assistance, and the, the, the idea was that he would transcribe live certain lines, selected lines, onto the IRC chat room for people who perhaps are unable for various reasons to be present in the drama center space. And at the same time, he would accept and take questions from the IRC chat room during the Q&A section. Yeah, for over four or five nights. Uh, so, can you imagine this was in 1999? Uh, I believe from Harish and Elvin's memory, you know, it's like, you have to still have to dial up with them at Brown Center and go to the So, so, yeah, we have to imagine it within the context uh, when it was first staged. Um, I'm not going to talk so much at this point in time, but later, maybe we can talk about how I plan to reimagine it. Uh, but providing a historical context at this point in time, I think it's a good introduction. Um, maybe I'll talk a little bit about how I came across this particular play because it's quite often the most asked question. So I didn't see the play when it was first staged in 1999, just to clarify. Uh, I was secondary for uh, 16 years old. Uh, I wasn't really exposed to the theatre scene at that time. Uh, I came into theatre through, uh, after JC, through TNS actually. So I was a technical intern at TNS, uh, after waiting for my army to start after DC2 for about three months. And I guess if you would say is the, anything is the genesis, that would be the point when, when perspectives on life and, and my identity changed in a way. And I, I guess, you know, if Parish and Alvin remembers me, I had like a mop of blonde hair, <laughs> like entirely blonde, like a mop. And I was uh, under Patrick, who was, uh, who was, who is now with the cell, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, uh, so I had it. And then my task basically, for the first week, I think it's kind of like a disciple apprenticeship thing. You know, he just passed me to uh, uh, screw uh, cables for an entire week. Just sitting in a four year of and I'm very doing that. But beyond that, I also had the privilege of having other interns at the time, which include Ruby, who was tasked, I guess, with working with the archive. So we were primary school classmates, and I was very curious about what else was going on in TNS. So uh, we went into the archives and we looked through all the materials sometimes, and she would find interesting things and she would show it to me. Uh, even though I was just supposed to be doing the technical side. And it was at TNS at that time that I first came across uh, Joseph Ng's Brother King and all the reports around it and led to the subsequent reimagining of reenactment. Uh, and of course, this particular play completely without character. That was the first time I came across that. So, yeah, so that's the gymnastics. Uh, for a very long time, the video document of the original production was thought to be lost on. Uh, it didn't, it wasn't, it, when, when people asked for the video documentation and they approached TNS, uh, you have to understand TNS does so many plays, and Complete Without Character is just one of the many plays, like four or five plays that they turn out here. And, and, and just having the resources dedicated to archive each of all these plays in, in its entirety would be would be exhausting and really needs a dedicated team or uh, some other institution to come in and help out. 
Uh, but we're complete without character, the document that video document researchers, when they come to TNS to look for the play, will be given essentially a DVD of the final rehearsal at King Hill. So it wasn't even in the drama center space. For a very long time, it was thought to not survive or not be complete. So I went back into the archives and with the help of Shaggy, who digitized all the VHS, so I didn't have to do it, so very thankful for him. I looked through it and found that there was actually surviving fragments from three different evenings in the performance. So it's not one, one single performance, uh, but it's three different evenings. And from there, it became possible to stitch an entire performance in the drama center uh, final production uh, together. Uh, so, if anything else, that's the basic thing that I hope would happen or I have given for, to TNS, uh, the DVD of the complete edit of the production. Uh, so, perhaps just as an introduction to Complete Without Character and the play, we will watch a smaller clip that I edited from, it's about a five minute clip from the 90 minute production. And I'll end my section for the end of the session. Any questions we need to continue the conversation later? You know, I have a friend. He says, with me, it's very strange. And I also have another friend. He says, it's very strange. When I was first time of the day of the I had to go all the way to Amsterdam to see him. When I arrived to Amsterdam, they had just buried me to me. So I had gone to him. And I asked him. I said, wait, when you met me, did he tell you of this thing? Yes, I said, really? Then you know, why did you take precaution? Now you are sick and you are dying. Sick then. You and the whole world never stand. I said, try me. You said, what was I when you gave me that? I was an our baby. I spoke for a kid. I worked in a pig farm, slaughtering pigs in this farm. Then came this crazy arm of men who took me away. And he gave me a new life. So what did I do? The only one thing I had to it was my life. I heard about it. And I heard those things. And all of you can hear the things. Look at me, Tyler, and who will be you? The eyes. Can you love them? Can you give them a chance? To have a full and normal life. Or in your eyes and the eyes of the sky, they should be shining and lofty and never loud in coming. They scream in nature again. Can you? Can you look at them as normal?
thank you Tahan for sharing that and we'll go on from Tahan a little bit later. Let me now introduce Pat Tov, who's going to tell us a bit of the background of her work in Terra in Cochin Thank you, Pat. Hello. Um, well, Terra in Cochin is actually a rebranding of a previous production, which is called Homogenous. Homogenous was created in 2012. Um, it's basically about walking. Um, walking is kind of a mini obsession for me and, and why walking. I think it's one thing that many people ask. I think for me, it's a very daily motion, a very daily act, and I'm interested in that particular movement which is non-performative and non not dramatic. And I feel that also a lot of my work process is very involved with the body. And so even when it comes to as a performer I, I always enter my work mainly through the body. And so even when it comes to thinking and writing and creating work, um, I, I walk a lot of think. So the idea of walking has um, allow me to get in touch with my thoughts and as well as I began to be curious because it is a way for me to explore my neighborhood, my community and it's a way to think beyond our daily motion and the different layers behind that act. Um, the main thing that inspired me was I came across a book by Rebecca Sonnet it's called A History of Walking. And what for me was just a daily stroll or a daily activity, like, okay, it's nice to walk. But I think after coming across a lot of literature on walking, I began to look at this um, act on a wider, more expensive point of view, um, in a way on how evolution from standing to, from, from crawling, to standing and how that has actually changed our speech pattern. It, it um, lengthens our vocal cords and speech came about through evolution. And I began to also think about the spiritual aspect of walking, a pilgrimage, um, and the political side of march, or the tourist, you know, of, of knowing your own space. And when you walk through a land, you really understand it in an embodied manner. So I was like, okay, I have a lot of, I'm excited about this, and how do I go about making a project out of it? Because there are many, many uh, possibilities, and I started looking into different artists who walk, um, like walking artists who create work from a lived daily experience. And some are mappings and a lot of digital stuff, and Visual art. So basically, the idea of walking has travels uh, across many um, art mediums and all. Um, it got very big, and I started thinking about maybe it should be an interactive piece. Do I go to a particular community? Why the community? So questions were, were big because this is um, it's a basic thing, but it's like if I think of food, there's so much culture and political and, and physical aspect to it. What more something that we all do every day. Then I began to go into the personal and, and narratives. I mean, if I can't answer these big questions, maybe I can answer, um, I can look for myself. And I just look at um, walking in, in different aspects for me, like the idea of what I like about it, the idea of wandering, the idea of a spiritual, because of the body and the mind connection. And then, of course, since I was walking so much, I thought, okay, what happens if you can't walk? And then the idea of mobility, the frustration with mobility. And somehow this different, this vast web of information of walking um, became narrowed down to my personal experience with walking. And so I performed alone in, um, Homogenous, as part of the Raw Theatre series in 2012. Um, homogenous felt right for me because I was researching so much and I was sitting in my room and looking at, apparently we were one of the fastest walkers, Singaporeans, and 
Yeah. And my routine, I, I will talk about walking, but I'm always walking that routine, the same path. So the idea of it being the same, the same motion, same route, same, same, yeah, that much. And um, yeah, so that's the process of creating that, that title, why that title. And now I change it, it's called Terra Incognita, um, the sense of theology unknown. And yeah, that's just to give you a brief background on, on the content of the work and how I arrive at the main narrative. We are talking about the development of Thank you, Pat. Can I now invite uh, John and Lin Sien to talk a bit about Mosaic? Thank you. Hello. Um, I'll be brief. Um, Take Off Productions, for those of you who don't know, is an independent uh, theatre collective that's, that's made up of um, young theatre makers, young adults, youths, and we come together and we do shows, um, and we all participate in different aspects of the theatre making process. So um, let's just give you a who we are. Um, so the Mosaic, which is a play, was first commissioned for the Lit Up Festival last year, which was held at the Law Arts Center, and then that brief to me was always oh, going to be a main thing kind of like. 20 something audience, you know, people. So I, I, I set about writing a play um, about that would address the you know, that community of people. And um, Mosaic is a play perhaps the most kind of like mundanely basic in the sense of the word, but it's a very straightforward play. Uh, it's about a bunch of 20 somethings who turn up at a playground, from one of those old fashioned mosaic playgrounds that you see not that much And uh, the night before it's due to be demolished, so it's actually kind of like a protest event organized by one of the and what unfolds through the night is a series of betrayals um, and uh, unprogramming relationships um, that has a kind of symbolic relationship with uh, the way you know, people in my generation, I feel, uh, deal, with process, deal with the process of the past. So the play is broadly concerned with questions of how you know, we relate as Singaporeans to our past, the fact that it's constantly being really loaded around us and we kind of stuck in a constant, constantly removing presence. So um, that's just to give you a kind of flavor of the play. And I'm interested in the first production at uh, the Lila Festival of 2013, which will be helping a new production of it with a different cast and a very different designs and visibility um, at the French Festival of 2015. So that's a brief brief. You can ask me more questions about it later. Thank you, Joel. And finally, let's have an introduction from Alma Tan, Necessary Stage, who's going to talk to us about the Double Bill Untitled Women. Thanks, John. Um, untitled uh, Women uh, comprises a Double Bill, uh, Untitled Cow Number One, and Untitled Women Number One. And uh, both uh, short pieces were written by Harish for Jeff Chen. Uh, that was the group of young uh, and upcoming uh, theatre practitioners that joined uh, the Necessary Stage full-time in around year 2000, at, when we were at Marine Parade, um, when we first moved into Marine Parade Community, uh, uh, community Centre. Uh, uh, so it, it's been done a few times, and, uh, and uh, I titled Women, uh, Nora Samsia, who's here, and uh, Nolina Mohan, and uh, also by the late uh, Emily Young. And I think at one show, Isis also took over. Uh, Macau. Macau, yeah. Isis. Uh, Isis. Isis, yes. Isis, yeah. 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 Yeah, so it's been, oh, it's, 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 it's actually tried. Isis, the person, not fair. Not terrible. <laughs> 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 so it's been done several times, we already had the, the benefit of different treatments. Um, and it was really uh, mind-blowing uh, work because uh, the, uh, the, direct, uh, the, picture, the, the director, Jack Chen, was uh, naked. Uh, uh, he's lying naked there among the IKEA Beautiful Ikea lens. <laughs> it's, uh, it's highly, highly designed. And it was, it was in a way, uh, a kind of uh, 
would say confrontation. But uh, because we were in a we were in a community center, and uh, the R twenty one just started, you know, for cinemas, and we're saying that Singapore is so small, uh, people that watch R twenty one works in town would be living in Marine Parade. So what's the difference then? So works like that were, were done at our own uh, black box at Marine Parade. Uh, it was uh, very poorly conceived and very brilliant, brilliantly executed. Uh, later, uh, there's a small video clip and you can see what I mean. Um, uh, I think we should just go to that, right? Yeah, let's go to the video. Um, it's really, uh, uh, it, questions, uh, it questions authorship because it's, uh, it's the director and is the director the big why uh, to carry out the meaning of the text or is the director the other author that has its own intent. So uh, the, the work there was questioning this, uh, for me, it was questioning the, that relationship. And, uh, yeah, so th there were very radical responses. Some people really loved it and some people were uh, disturbed. So I, I'll just let you watch it. Okay, it's not that the sound is, uh, there's no sound, it's very quiet at the start. Uh, I think when it was done in Delhi, there was someone that shouted from the audience, Louder please! <laughs> <laughs> but it was the concept of starting quietly. <laughs> I was so happy for her. My daughter is alive. My mother is alive. My grandparents are alive. My brothers and sisters are alive. My mother died seven years ago. My auntie and I came for her. We dressed her. She was so cold. When I was seven, I had a lot of presents on my birthday. But my mother kept them in the cousin. I was only allowed one. Which one? The wrong one. I always choose the wrong one. I can see forgotten. What happened? Dogs. What happened? Men. What happened? A child. There are a few segments, and each segment is followed by a long pause. But the two uh, performers remain like that throughout the whole uh, piece. Okay, the next one is Untitled Cloud. So Untitled Woman is uh, one woman going, undergoing transition, and the other woman guiding her. An untitled cow is a cow, uh, a widow who's uh, grieving and lamenting on the, you know, grieving on the death of her husband. Uh, but it's a, it's a cow, the widow. Shelly can drag this. I'm a widow. My husband. Is dead. On the first day, the blind feet and then the end. On the second day, there were crows and ravens. Soon there were other, bigger birds. Then the tiger and the lion and the vulture is left. Only bones remain, resting peacefully on the earth. I die when you die. You sleep, sleep.
So uh, from the small segments, you can kind of uh, summarize the uh, kind of confusion of the conventional performance codes. Uh, am I to take this seriously? Is it can? You know, do I laugh or not laugh? And then suddenly the performer is really crying. Uh, very post Brexit devices. I mean, that's my reading. Uh, it might be different from the director's intent, but it was rich in that kind of symbiotic uh, implosions uh, in terms of performative uh, traditions at a very early stage in Singapore uh, theatre and school. Not early, uh, but you know, during that period. So it was very bold uh, in, in you know, year 2000 and all that, that we had uh, this kind of works. Yeah. So, I'll talk uh, later more about this, yeah, for now this is. Okay, so perhaps I can start by just throwing this question to uh, the group of you. What are some of the considerations